Hey guys, how's it going? This is Stealthful Lockpicker here, and welcome back to this week's Lockpicking Homeschool series. The video I have for you today is going to be on spool pens. What we're going to do is try to figure out the answer to why sometimes when you pick a lock with spool pens like you see in front of you here, you do not get a false set or any counter rotation. More information is coming up on this topic in just a second. Please stay tuned. If you happen to be picking a lock that you know has at least one spool pen and you did not get a false set or any counter rotation, the problem could lie with the actual bidding of the lock itself. So when you take a look at the key to this lock, you can see that it's going to have some pretty decent bidding, but I only have it pinned up for the first three pens for demonstration purposes right here. But when we look at key pin number one, that's going to be a five cut, which is a middle ranged key pin. And then it's going to go to a nine cut in position number two, which is a maximal depth key pen for a schleg, and then a four cut for number three. So what's happening is when you look at position number two, over that nine key pen, it's going to lift the spool pin all the way up to the top of the plug here. And as you remember on a spool pin, you're going to have a thicker outside diameter, followed by a middle thinner inside diameter, and then a thicker outside diameter on the bottom. How this sits at rest is the thicker outside diameter is going to sit inside the plug and the middle inside diameter is never going to come into play. When you're trying to get a false set followed by counter rotation, you're going to need to have the thinner inside diameter be able to come into play. And since this is lifted up so high, this spool is effectively going to be rendered ineffective. So when you take a look at the standard pens, you can see that it is sitting just like one because that thicker diameter on the bottom is essentially going to just be standard pen. So what I'm going to do is show you an example of me trying to pick open this lock, pinned up the three pens with a standard pen in one. I'm going to replace this with a spool pen in two and then a standard pen in three. And you're going to see how we are not going to get a false set. All right, so we got the lock up in the vise now, and what we're going to do is we're going to see how this spool pin is going to interact in position number two with the nine cut. As we talked about earlier, the nine cut is going to be such a tall key pin that the outer diameter of the spool is going to sit at the very top of the plug, and it's going to prevent the spool pin from actually coming into play. How we have this pinned up is going to be a standard spool and standard, and we're going to try to pick it open right now, and I do not expect we're going to get any false set or counter rotation, this lock is going to pick open very much like if it had all standard pens. So we're going to lift up on key pin one, got a click, now moving back to two, got a little slight click, and now three, got another click, and the lock has now opened up. As you can tell, as we picked the lock, I did not get a false set, and the tension wrench never turned back like we were getting counter rotation. This lock picked open like it had all standard pens, even though it did actually have one spool pen, which is a form of a security pen. What I'd like to do now is show you an example of what would happen if we move the spool pen over to position number three, where we'd have a much more optimal placement. When you are trying to pen spool pens, you always want to try to put them over the shorter key pens and put the standard pens and the serrated pens over the longer ones so you can try to get the most effectiveness out of them. So let's check that out right now. Now we have moved the spool pen over from position 2 to position 3 and we have optimized its placement. If you remember back, the spool pen over 2 was over a 9 cut and that is a very long key pen and it's making it so that it works almost like a standard pen because the thicker outside diameter is the only part coming into play. Now that it's moved over to position 3, the thinner inside diameter is going to come into play and we're going to be able to get a false set and counter rotation. So with the lock fully optimized, what we're going to do is put our top of the keyway tensioner in, and hopefully once we pick the two standard pens, we're going to get a false set and some counter rotation. So let's start off with key pin number one. So key pin number one, I'm lifting up on it, and I just got a click, and the driver pen feels set. Two, I just lightly tapped it, that feels set, and now I have a little bit of a false set. Now going all the way back to three, I'm going to lift up on it, I'm getting counter rotation, the pin is set, and the lock is now opened up. Since we are able to optimize our spool pin placement, we are able to get the thinner inside diameter to come into play, we are able to effectively use our security pin, and this spool pin worked very well. 
One thing to always take into consideration when you are pinning a lock with spool pens is you want to try to put them over the shorter pens so that they're able to get fully utilized. And if you have any standard or serrated pens, you can try to put them over the longer key pens so that they can be fully utilized as well. But either way, guys, thank you so much for checking out this week's lock picking homeschool video. I had a lot of fun making it, and I really hope that you found it very educational. If you guys have any questions or suggestions, please drop them in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more like it, please subscribe. As always, thank you so much for checking this out, and I hope you all have a great day. And just thank you so much for checking this out.